I could have used another hour of sleep. At least my side stitch doesn't hurt as bad today. Ugh. Or not. Hello, dirt brown eyes. Too bad you didn't get your daddy's pretty blue ones. Okay, time to get your butt moving. Wake up. My fair one, you are joy, you are light, and your name, it is written on my heart. Oh, my king, I'm in love with you, how you have captivated me. Has there ever been a love like ours? I live to love you and to know you more. How perfect this, a love so strong, you make it easy to us King, you are life, you are peace, you are hope when hope is gone. My beloved one, I give you all that I have, all I have is yours. Has there ever been a Ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Julia and how she came to be loved. But not just by anyone. No, she was chosen by none other than the king himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Julia, she was happy. But, well, there was a trouble, you see. Uh, her king was, well... Invisible. Didn't seem to bother Julia, though, though it did make it a bit hard to explain sometimes. For example, when she'd be asked, Julia, I know a guy who thinks you're pretty. <clears throat> uh, pretty, pretty nice. He'd like to... Take you out sometime. Would you like to go out with him? I've told you my heart is spoken for. Tell your friend thank you, but no thank you. Oh, come on. You say you were taken. By who? An imaginary king? Don't be ridiculous, girl. There was a time when you knew him, too. If you could only remember, you wouldn't mock me. He's as real to me as... The blush of a sunrise or sunset As real as a warm golden day My king is as strong as the waves on the shore And that's why I'm singing again Ugh. You are such a Disney princess. When are you going to realize that a real, warm-blooded, One day hard... I will see him face to face, and it will all be worth it. Yeah, when you're dead. So what about now? I'm not saying there's not an earthly companion for me out there somewhere, but until I meet him, I'm perfectly content. I'm picking up Cardia. So, do you think that I should go out with some guy that I don't even know? I don't know. I mean, sure. How else are you supposed to get to know someone? Oh, maybe not. I mean, you do seem pretty satisfied with your invisible hunk. <laughs> Cardia, don't you agree with me that Julia's biological clock is ticking like a freaking time bomb? If you pass on Connor, he'll be with someone next week. If you're not careful, you'll become invisible too. I mean, that's kind of the goal. I wish I was invisible, but instead I battle my temper and I'm selfish and childish when it comes down to it. I want to love like him and serve like him. Well, we're here. Hey, losers! Via, help me convince Julia to go out with Connor. Seriously, she should still be with Blake. If it weren't for her invisible king, she could have been married by now. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you suddenly forget how two-faced Blake was when I needed him most? People don't change.
You see what I have to put up with? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> they plague me. They try to tempt me with others. But look how far you've come. Remember when we first met? I was stupid and angry. I was a hot mess. Julia was stupid and angry. Her words, not mine. She was also depressed and suicidal. That was when she had first responded to the king, calling her name. Eight years ago. I wonder if I ever didn't feel like curling my cookies. School right now sounds like Count Dracula's torture chambers. I don't want to go. Ugh. Miss Travers will have a hissy fit if I miss another day. I wish I could die. Uh, I'm so done arguing with my mom all the time. I just want to live on an island all by myself and be my own dictator. I should leave and not tell her where I'm going. Turn off my phone and let her worry for once. Or see if she even notices I'm gone. Oh my gosh, you do love partaking from the crucible of despair. She loves you, just not the way you want her to. At least I have Blake when everything in my life is crap. I want to spend some time with him today. I say we ditch school and go to the beach. <gasps> yes! Call Blake, we could be home by six. No one will even know we left. Um, I have something I need to tell him. Is it that thing, that secret we've not been talking about? Yep. Are you sure you want to do that? I don't think that's a good idea. Blake might totally freak out, and then what? What I still don't understand is, the doctor said it couldn't happen. There weren't supposed to be any consequences. You weren't sure you were ready, but you did it anyway. Look, it's perfectly normal for girls our age to be having sex. What's the problem? And plus, you love him. But I didn't think I could get pregnant. Well, you are, and you need to tell Blake. As the father, he has the right to know. Maybe he'll want to keep it. <laughs> um, hello. If you keep that baby, do you know what people at school will think? They'll think you're a slut. A hypocrite. They know you're just a church girl and think of walking through the halls with everyone staring at you. Plus, Blake's parents will totally disown him. Think about it. Look, Blake's parents are all peachy about right and wrong. They think Blake is perfect. No, I wouldn't tell him if I were you. Unless, of course, you want to lose him. You have a lot of options to consider. It would be smart to get some counseling. Nobody needs to know. Blake is the father, Julia. He at least needs to know. Okay, maybe Blake and my mom. And if she doesn't get it, I'll just throw it right back in her face and remind her how I was born. Julia. Did you hear that? Julia. Julia. Head out of the clouds. Coffee at table three. This is Frida, owner of the diner. No nonsense, this one. Sorry, Frida, I'm on it. Hello, Blake. You wanted coffee? Hey, yeah. Thought I was gonna have to get up and get it myself. Sorry about that. And this is Blake. You remember him? Baby daddy from eight years ago? Look, Julia, when are you gonna quit ghosting me? All right, look, I told you I was sorry. Okay? Saying you're sorry doesn't change the fact that you go out and drink with your friends every night and then show up to church on. like you're someone else. We've already I... talked about this. No, we haven't talked in months. Look, I've changed, okay? I hey, Julia, can I get some coffee too, please? This is Connor. Funny, new, handsome. No nonsense and no drama in their history. Wonder where this will go. I'll be right there. Thank you. So, did you want to order something? Chicken noodle soup. All right. Max, one chicken noodle. Juice penicillin, coming right up. Oh, Max. Seriously? You are so corny. Actually, um, I'll have the soup du jour. Or whatever. Um, you remember what I like. Fine. One split pea with ham. Max, uh, hold uh, the chicken, make it pee. I don't think it works like that. Don't, don't. I'd like the fried chicken, please. All right, it comes with fries or potato oh. salad? Um, I'll go with fries. I see you're not worried about your figure, are you? Uh, no, I can afford it. This came from a pretty vigorous workout. I need the calories. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Are, you okay? are you okay? I oh, got you it. So I got it. Look at that! Is, is the chair broken? Broke? Okay. Are you I'm, hurt? Okay. Oh, I'm he's going to sue us now. My thank insurance you, premiums no are so going to go up. Connor, thank you. You missed a spot. By the way, Connor, oh, why don't you go on a date with Connor? Why don't you marry Connor while what? you're at it? Hey, Julia. I've been wanting to ask you something, by the way. Um, would you want to hang out sometime, maybe? Go grab a few drinks, you know, watch some Netflix, chill. 
Oh, you're that kind of guy. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Burn! Why don't you go put some aloe on that one, bro? Here's your soup. You boys are barking up the wrong tree. Julie needs a man who's going to treat her right. A man who loves the Lord just as much as she does. She doesn't need Netflix and chill. The only reason I come here is my aunt owns this dive and lets me eat for free. Want to join me? Sure. Actually, I haven't been feeling that great. I'll pass. You look like you're going to wither up and blow away. Have you seen a doctor? No. I'm afraid of what they'll say. They might be crazy, or worse. Maybe nothing's actually wrong with me. Honestly, it's probably just PMS. You know how I get. I'm not buying it. How long have you been feeling this way? I don't really know. It just keeps getting worse instead of better, no matter what I do. Sleeping more, eating better, practicing self-care, nothing helps. What are your symptoms? Have you been crying more than usual? Sleeping in? How often have you been getting out? Hey, Cardia. <laughs> Whoa, you look terrible. You're giving Eeyore some serious competition with that little rain cloud ready to burst. Hey, guys. Man, I just feel like I'm running out of steam. I have this horrible stitch in my side. I feel like it's going to either implode or explode. Cardia's not feeling well either. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm okay. Just not feeling great for the past few months. I'll be fine. You should go to a doctor. How about I take you? It'll be better than dodging Blake for the hundredth time. Plus, John Doe is back begging for food again. Will Frida give you the day off to go see the doctor? That old hag never gives an inch unless there's something in it for her. Well, I've been coming into work in excruciating pain for a month now, so I can take a day off. Or at least a half day. If she doesn't like it, she can fire me. Dad used to let me sit on his lap and read his novels out loud. Then he'd get fed up and tell me I was butchering the flow. I think he left because I asked too many questions. He said his uncle needed a mechanic in Poovy, Idaho. That's the last time he darkened our door, as Mom likes to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to meet a man by the name of Daryl. Today we find him at a low point, just another in a long stream of low points, drowning in a puddle of his own making. I'm writing you this letter, hoping to explain myself to you. I've written you letters before, with every intention of sending them. <laughs> But apparently, I'm too big of a coward. I'm pretty sure you think I'm the biggest turd ever to stain the earth. Yeah, you'd probably be right. Daddy always had a way with his words. That's why it's best I stay put and let you move on with your life. <laughs> I ain't too proud to say I lost my job of six months after I was arrested for another DUI. Now I'm looking for work, and I hope I find something so I can come see you. <laughs> On the other hand, you're probably better off without me. But thinking about you does get through me through the hardest times. I hope you are well, Daryl J. Pierce. Well. Aren't you glad you met Daryl? A real ray of sunshine, that one. Now, we're going to go back, and we'll see how Blake is handling Julia's news eight years ago.
It's not ideal, but kids our age do this all the time. My parents had me when they were in high school. And look how that turned out. So, I have some news. You probably noticed how sick I've been. Yeah, what's up with that? Something wrong? Well, I can't eat anything except crackers without throwing up. Don't tell me you're pregnant. According to the test, I'm super pregnant. Wow. Does your mom know? Not yet. I want to do it straight to the abortion clinic. I mean, that would take care of it. How could this happen? The doctor said I couldn't get pregnant. You know I can't tell my parents. They'd kill me. So what do we do? Do you think we're ready? No, not even close to ready. Then there's your answer. They were in a pickle. What you didn't know is that Julia had a medical condition. The doctor said that she shouldn't have children, but in her young mind it meant that she couldn't. Blake is from a very religious home. This news could hurt his parents' influence in their community. And he's torn because he loves Julia, and he wants a future with her, but he's just not ready for any of that. Julia, on the other hand, is scared for her life, and she's torn between her health, the life of a child, and her future. I think I'm going to just go to that clinic. Are you sure? It's my body, and I don't want to feel sick anymore. So you're just going to kill the baby? They say it's not a baby yet, right? Didn't you used to be a fetus? I'm pretty sure it's a baby with its own body and everything. Blake, you are no help at all. Julia, you have another choice. Did you hear that? Hear what? Julia. Julia, are you listening? Yeah, sorry. What's going on? I need to talk about this. I need you to listen. Okay, go ahead. The doctor diagnosed me with depression. He said it could have been brought on by grief or trauma and gave me some medicine. I guess in the back of my mind, I've always felt a little anxious and withdrawn, but depressed? I can't be depressed. I'm happy, right? What do you need? How can I help you? I need to... to to not feel like an emotional zombie at age 25. I haven't slept in weeks, and I keep having these thoughts, like life would just be easier for everyone if I wasn't here anymore. Oh, Cardia, so many people love you. I love you. I need to talk to my king about you. That's funny. Your imaginary friend, what can he do? He's not imaginary, he's invisible, and he loves you. I'm sure he'll do all he can to help you if you just ask. Well, I guess I have nothing to lose. Julia took that as a yes. Oh, my king, I bring my dear Cardia before you. Right now I speak peace over her mind and her body. I command all spirits of sickness and depression and infirmity to go. And in its place, I speak wholeness and joy. I ask that her mind would be on earth as it is in heaven. We know that there is no depression, no anxiety in heaven, so we say that it will not manifest itself here on earth. I ask that you would show her any parts of her heart that she needs to bring to you to find wholeness and peace. Amen. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That was a good prayer. I actually feel peaceful. I don't know why she feels the need to spew her shoes all over me and then tell me what to do based on her life mistakes. Ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. I can make my own decisions, son. Actually, you only make bad decisions. No, I don't. I make some good decisions. Oh, yeah? Name one that isn't instantly self-gratifying. Whatever. Don't you have to go to work or something? Oh, well, yeah. Frida's almost done covering for me, but can you please keep it down? Cardia isn't feeling well. Poor little Eeyore. It's not like you're dying or anything. Stop calling me Eeyore, Thea. I want to be happy but I'm sick. 
You look fine to me. Buck up, princess. It's serious. The doctor diagnosed her with depression. They say you're depressed, but you're always so upbeat. If I'm being honest, I felt this way since I was a kid. I try and see the good and hope that the darkness and dread will go away, and sometimes it does, but lately, I just can't. <laughs> Dude, uh, sorry. I, I guess you weren't faking it. Trust me, I don't want to be a wet blanket, but I can't function anymore. Faking it has been how I get through the day, and now I don't know what to do. Ice cream. Ice cream is for the dark night of the soul. St. John of the Cross would approve. Let's eat ice cream. Ice cream and time will heal you. Obviously, time has not healed her, dummy. You should talk to a psychiatrist. As the girls were focused on Cardia's diagnosis, Julia forgot all about her lunch date with her mother. Hello? Oh, hey, I totally forgot. Just give me a second. Here's your purse. No worries. Everything okay? Yeah, it's, it's fine. Let's just go. But everything wasn't fine, and Aria sensed that. After all, she had been through a lot with Julia, and she knew that look on her face. Like the time her friend Jessie found Julia parked outside of the abortion clinic, and she decided to call her. I remember that time the cat had her babies in the laundry basket. There was blood and gook everywhere. I can't do this. This is a big decision. You're sick. Plus, you could actually die. I don't support this. It's murdering a baby. Yeah, but if it kills you because you bleed to death, then who's going to raise the baby? Blake, your mother. Face it, Julia. You're not ready for motherhood. The stupid pregnancy complicates everything. It would be just my luck to die of an accidental pregnancy. What am I going to do? God loves that baby, Julia. You can't just kill it. That would be so sad. But I messed up. This isn't how God wants to bring a child into the world. You have to get married and make a covenant and all that. Do you honestly believe that? Most people we know have sex and they're not married. Hold up. You know Gina? She had her baby and now she's homeschooling. It is possible, just so you know. No, I think I just need to get rid of it. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? Oh, I'm just waiting for a friend. You are? Yep. Well... Um, your mom said you haven't been feeling good for a couple months. How are you doing today? I'm okay. When I was pregnant, all I could eat was saltines. Like I said, just waiting for a friend. I wasn't ready for my first baby. I was about your age, too. There are other choices. Julia. Mm, not really. You are loved. You're not alone. Yeah. How about I call your mom? I'm sure deep down inside, you would like her support through this. It's just that I thought if I lost the baby, she wouldn't have to know. It's true. If you choose to lose this baby, it will be in heaven. But Julia, you will never be the same. This is a life and death decision. Let me call your mom. What about your medical condition? You don't have a choice, Julia. Exactly. It's a matter of your life, too, not just this baby. But guys! <laughs> It's a baby! Think of how much you will love it and how much it will love you. And how fun it will be to dress it up. I mean, my mom. So, Aria came and got Julia. They went to the doctor and confirmed that she was eight weeks pregnant. She had a severe case of endometriosis and was at risk of major complications. It was time for some big decisions. So, what do I do? Oh, Julia, I wish we had talked before any of this had happened. I know you and Blake think you love each other enough to be intimate. It was only once, Mom. <laughs> Apparently that's all it takes. I thought I should just get rid of it, but I don't want to kill the baby. It isn't his or her fault. It's a tough call. It's a sticky situation with your age, your health. 
I must be the ultimate disappointment to you. I learned from your mistakes, didn't listen to anybody, and didn't even do anything to protect myself. Your physical issues aside, there's a reason we stay to wait until you're married to have sex. Everybody has sex, Mom. Not everyone. That babysitter you left me with? You'd be shocked if you knew what goes on at my school. It was no different than when I was in high school. But I'm more concerned about what's going on with you. I didn't mean to. Like I said, it was only once, and I regretted it instantly. I can't believe I'm pregnant. This isn't fair. Sex leads to pregnancy. And bringing a baby into this world is the biggest responsibility of your life. You're in charge of raising a person. God created the covenant of marriage for a reason. You know more than anyone how hard it is to be raised by a single parent. Blake doesn't even have a job he can support you with. And you both had dreams of college and careers. So are you saying I should get an abortion? Julia. Did you hear that? Hear what? Someone keeps calling me. Well, then answer. Really? You'd be surprised, but God speaks to us all in his own way. All right, next time. When you were born, I was barely 17, and I wouldn't change a thing. But it was hard. I married your father because it was the right thing to do. But had I not gotten pregnant, things could have been so much different. I might have met someone new, gone on to college. That's always in the back of my mind, but never concerning you. You should have just had an abortion. It would have been way better for you back then. No. You are the best decision I ever made. No regrets. Mom, what if I want to keep the baby? Julia. What? Well, I'm just thinking. No, not you. Sorry. Listen, let's talk about this later, when we've both had time to think about it. Okay? I love you. I, I just want to be alone. Okay. Julia? Yes? You know who I am? Your voice is familiar. I used to talk to you all the time. I miss those talks. You are my invisible friend when Daddy left us. When I was younger, I believed in you. I just got, I don't know, sidetracked? Well, it happens, but now I'm calling out to you again. I'm in trouble. Big trouble. I don't suppose you could help me out with that. I promise. I am with you no matter what. I'm such a train wreck. I wish I could just die and be done with it all. Julia, do you trust me? Do you believe that I have your good in mind? How could you possibly have my good in mind? I'm a teenager and I'm pregnant out of wedlock. Julia, I, I know what I'm doing. I have this all planned out. I have a plan to give you a future, the one you've always hoped for. When you call out to me, Julia, when you cry out to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. And yes, Julia, when you are serious enough about finding me, and when you want it more than anything else, I will make sure that you are not disappointed. I don't deserve it. It's not a matter of deserving it. You're my child, and I love you. to let go when nothing makes sense you're hurting give up control let your burdens be gone don't worry you've made your mistakes you have your regrets Lay it down, come to me, let it go, cause I am here for you now. I'm fighting for my life, oh my life seems done, I'm spinning in this whirlwind of pride.
it's all said and done The fight has been won You are mine You are free Don't you know I am here for you now Come to me And that, folks, was the first day of Julia's relationship with the king. An excellent thought to leave you with for intermission. Walking is hurting my ears. Hey, that's how I sing. I miss Cardia. I keep praying for her. I don't know why she's getting sicker and sicker. What Cardia has is an emotional disorder brought on by lots of undealt with trauma. What did you think was going to happen? Have you ever actually had a prayer answered? I mean, I just don't know why he won't answer my prayers. Maybe your imaginary king isn't the rainy day kind. Or maybe you just suck at having faith. Wow, thanks. Well, Cardi would say, let's binge something on Netflix and eat ice cream. <gasps> Darlings, I can't believe I'm the one to suggest this. What if we went and cheered up our poor friend? If it were me, a visit from the passe would be just the medicine I needed. You guys go without me. <sighs> Fine, stay here and mope, you big phony. Are you sure? Yeah, I just need to be alone right now. Julia? I wish Full House was still on. Julia? What? You embarrassed me. I stood up for you. I went out on a limb for you. I believed in you. What? So you feel like I failed you because I didn't answer your earnest prayer? Yeah, pretty much. But I love Cardia. Yep. I heard your prayer. Great. Julia, don't you trust me? I thought I did, but what difference does it make? Julia, 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 could you, could you turn off the TV, please? No, I'm not interested. I just want to veg out right now. I am so sick of all of this. You never answer my prayers, and when I need you most, it feels like you're playing games with me, teasing me, ignoring me. So you're mad at me? Yeah. Well, we're heading down towards Mullins Corral. We're making a wrong turn. Folks, it seems the love affair between Julie and the King is cooling off. Eight years ago, this romance was headed in the opposite direction. <sighs> My mom practically blackmailed me into going into that conference. I'm actually so glad I went. Who knew it would be the best weekend of my life, son? I didn't know Jesse was going to be the speaker. Wonder if my mom knew. Usually all that preaching and worship is just boring, but this time it was different. Or maybe we were different. We turned into a bunch of hallelujah hippies. Yeah, that. So, are we different now? Are we all in this together? I never cried so much in my life. I'll take that as a yes. Yup, me and Jesus till the wheels fall off. Woo! And this baby, I finally feel at peace of leaving it in God's hands. Whatever happens, will happen. Hey, did you see that billboard? Don't end your pregnancy, we will raise your baby. Some church says they'll raise your baby, Julia. 
Oh my gosh, Julia, it's a sign. No way. If I'm having this baby, I'm keeping it. Yeah, but you don't die from it, stupid. Blake is not gonna like this. So many big decisions and changes to make. And time is short. There's a child at stake. So, let's go back to the future. Back to the future. Anyways, um, we'll see how Julia is handling that anger. Is she still escaping to Netflix and ignoring the king? Okay, this hurts no matter what position I'm in. If I lay down, if I lean to the left, if I take a shed load of pills. Ugh. I had those lady troubles before I was pregnant. Maybe it's back. Oh, sweet baby Jesus on a stick. This cannot be indigestion or the flu. When are you going to bite the bullet and go see the doctor? I'm not the sick one. Cardia is. I can't... I can't be sick too. Listen, Einstein, mind over matter will only go so far. You're suffering. It's time to find out why. Take it from me. It really helps to know what you're dealing with. Make an appointment already. You're not getting any better. And it's going to get so much worse. Fine. I'll call the doctor. So, Julia went in and found some very troubling news. Tests were taken, and it was confirmed that she had... Oh, no. Ovarian cancer? She needs a miracle, or it's curtains for this vibrant young lady. Let's go back eight years, and we'll see what Blake has to say about Julia's new resolve to keep their baby. Like, guess what? What's up? So, I decided to have the baby. I went to that conference, and God really made it clear of what I'm supposed to do. He said not to have an abortion and to trust him. He told you? Like, he actually talked to you? Yep, actually. Well, I've been thinking too, and I can't tell my parents. I can't be in this situation anymore. So you're choosing your parents' reputation over me? You're willing to ruin my parents' reputation? Their congregation, they wouldn't understand. They think their pastors were these hypocrites whose son's out there getting a girl pregnant. Um, but you did. I know, but I can't own it. Like, seriously, I'm giving you one more chance to change your mind. I'm having this baby, and I trust God. Do you? I guess if you have to know right now, no. So I'm on my own. Dude, why am I even surprised? See it, Blake. Just like my awesome dad, when things get tricky, time to leave Julia holding the bag. Julia, you're not alone. I'm with you. We will do this together. At least that. Oh yay, John Doe's back again. Don't make eye contact. <sighs> Smile, Julia. Be a good example. Hey there. Uh, what's this pretty girl's name? Uh, his name's Rocky Road. <laughs> kind of like my life. I like it. Uh, Rocky for short. <laughs> so, can I get you something? I, I saved these fries in case I ran into you today. Oh, thank you. But I actually ran into some money recently, so I'm going to order me some fried chicken, potato salad, oh, and a piece of pie. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Mmm, and Rocky, he'll have those fries. Okay. Um, oh, okay. oh, you okay, little sister? Yeah, I mean, not that you need to know my whole life story, but I just got diagnosed with stage four cancer. Ooh. 
Man, it feels crazy to say it out loud. I've been trying to hide it, but I can't keep doing this. Oh, cheaper, sweetheart. I'm sorry. My, uh, my wife died of cancer. You, you had a wife? Yeah, wife, two kids, job with benefits, a house, a bed. When the chemo killed her, I, I didn't know what to do. I was just so angry, and I still am. And then I started drinking and, well, threw it all away. What about your kids? Well, they went with the grandparents. They're all grown up now. We don't talk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Except the uh, last time I saw Ben, he was in the grocery store. He, he didn't even recognize me. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. What's your name? Oh, Cecil Garrett. Um, I heard you calling me John Doe over there, but I may be old, but I'm not deaf. Sorry. <laughs> now, how about that fried chicken? Yeah, and here are the fries for Rocky. Oh, thank you so much. Max, Get fried chicken fries. with potato yeah. salad for my friend. Southern Comfort with the side of spuds all dressed up. There you go. Yes, ma'am. There you go. Oh, and his pie, too. Don't forget that. Juliana Michelle Pierce. What in the name of Mary, Mother of Jesus, are you doing here? Are you crazy? Stage four cancer and waiting tables? Jeez, Karen, can you keep it down? <laughs> Did you just call me Karen? Karen, she just meaned you. Seriously, why are you working? I just, I need to not be in bed right now. I gotta keep my mind busy somehow. What's got into him? Oh, I don't know. Maybe something like overhearing that the love of his life has stage four cancer. He's probably a little stressed out. I know I'm stressed out. Julia, why are you not stressing out? Just stop. Put her up. Her whole life just got flipped upside down. This is the last week she's going to be a normal 25-year-old. Next week she goes in for surgery. You need to be lying down. Leave me alone. I need people to stop telling me what I need. How would they know if I don't even know? Oh my gosh. Hey buddy, you look like you need some cheering up. Or a new body, one that doesn't betray me and fall apart at age 25. Me and my wife have been praying for you. We were wondering if you wanted to come over for dinner and games. My daughter would love a fresh new victim to destroy in Pictionary. She's quite the artist and the most competitive person I've ever met. I don't know, I'm pretty competitive myself. All right, how does tonight sound? Okay, yeah, tonight works. I'm really looking forward to meeting your family. Yeah, I'll text you the time and the address. Now, why don't you go home? Frida's got this. Oh, well, I guess I should rest if I'm gonna give your daughter a run for her money. Thanks, Max. So, that was an unexpected blessing. Now it's time to see what happened to our poor teenage Julia. With Blake out of the picture, she's feeling more and more unequipped for motherhood. She's considering other options. Do you remember that, uh, that billboard? Yes. It was staring her in the face every day on her way home from school. So she scribbled down the number, and she decided to pray about it. I'm crying out to you, O oh Lord. I give it all to you. I need your wisdom and your truth. To know what we should do You hold us in your loving arms Please help us understand I cry out, I cry out Lord, please help me as I call on you for peace I cry out, I cry out Help me trust you and my 
It's all final. She's going to a family in that church. She? You just found out it's a girl and now you're giving her up? I don't know how I feel about that. You decided that's best just like that? The family wants to keep a piece of me with her. They asked if I wanted to name her. What should we name her? Carol, like Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, duh! Michelle, like the president's wife. And your middle name, hello. What should we name her? Remember at that youth conference when we were reading Psalm, the speaker kept saying, Selah, after each one? I remember that night. I thought the word was so pretty, I looked it up. It means to pause and reflect upon the presence of God. Selah, I like it. I know. Selah, I love it, but giving her away, this is hard. Hard, yeah, but think it through. She will have a stable, mature family who wants her and can raise her in church. It's for the best. It's ripping my heart out, though. How can a woman carry a child for nine months and then just say goodbye? Sad, sad, and furthermore, sad. Quit looking at the situation with your heart on your sleeve and think about the future for everybody. So you're doing it? I'm doing it. So that was an intense time for sure. Now, back to that evening at Max and Lily's house, present day. Max and uh, Julia, they had known each other for years, and they had a fun, quirky friendship, but she had never been to his house or met his wife. Hmm. Should be good. Hey. Wow, so this is where you come home to every night. I like having a picture of it in my head. <laughs> Julia, meet my wife, Lily. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Max talks about you all the time. And can I take your jacket oh, and your shorts? Sure. Thanks. I really appreciate the invitation. Aw. Well, Max said you had some health problems. Maybe we can pray with you before you leave. You are just the sweetest. Thank you. <laughs> 
Sweet as the sweetest songbird on a summer's eve. Oh, so I see the corny metaphors continue at home, do they? Oh, my Max is a poet at heart. But he keeps most of the ones for our daughter Joy. Could you imagine the list that he has going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The table's all set. Meet my cup of joy. Hello. Oh, did you know that you are just the sparkle in your daddy's eye? He just lights up every time he talks about you. Well, can you blame him? <laughs> <laughs> so, I heard I'm going to have a hard time beating you in Pictionary, but I'll have you know, I'm really competitive myself. Bring it, sister. These people are either spoiling me by letting me win, or they're terrible at drawing. <laughs> I haven't decided which it is yet. Man, you weren't kidding, were you? <laughs> Joy, I'm taking Julia's step to the den. She is adorable. Uh, who does she take after? She's adopted. <laughs> oh, how old is she? Oh, she's eight, but she thinks she's 28. <laughs> I wanted to be a grown-up when I was eight. I painted my nails red and drank milk from a cocktail glass. My dad said I was giving Jezebel a run for her money. Wait a second. Are you connecting the pieces, folks? Julia thought that this could be her daughter. She needed to sit down. She's feeling lightheaded. You feeling okay? Here, have a seat. Yeah. So, you adopted her? I mean, of course you did, but uh, tell me about it. Well, our church takes a serious stand on saving babies. We pray at the abortion clinics. We even offer help to women who want to give their babies up for adoption. You may have seen our billboard. Yeah. Well, we had tried for so long to have a child, and after several miscarriages, we were told to find other options, so... We prayed for God's will, and one night, our friend Jesse came over to the house. She had met this young mother who wanted a godly family for her baby. And when little Sayla Joy came home from the hospital, oh gosh, we've been in love with that little sparkle ever since. God is good, too good sometimes. I just can't believe how perfect he is and how wonderful she is. She's made our lives truly complete. So, Sayla? Well, that was the name her mom gave her, and we wanted to honor her mom with that. Table. I've slaved over the salad, and I'm quite proud of myself, too. Now, if you people are quite done shooting the breeze, let's go eat. Yes, ma'am, boss. So, that night was a revelation, and it set so many things right in Julia's mind. She was rejoiced to see that her baby was growing up in the kindest home with the sweetest people. But her surgery was coming like a dreaded sentence. They were performing a hysterectomy along with removing all of the cancer. She was ready to be out of pain, but she was mourning that she would never again have a child. Next time we see you, you'll be cancer-free. Yeah, but then comes all the chemo torture and radiation treatment. Stop it! Julia needs our support right now. You're gonna be fine. I just don't know why he won't answer my prayers. When are you going to get that it's all inside your head? Obviously. Still not helping, guys. I don't know. I mean, maybe Maya's right. I feel so distant from my king. I just don't know why he'd abandon me when I need him most. Like I said, not the rainy day kind. Doesn't really care after all. It's okay. You still have us. Thanks, guys. It's almost time. We'll be waiting, fingers crossed. Here's a sedative to prepare you for surgery. And there's a man here to see you. A man? I'll send him in. That's all I need, some man. Better not be Blake, because he was so there for me the last time I was hanging by a thread. Hi. What are you doing here? Your mother called me. Okay, but why did you come? I mean, I don't see you for almost 16 years and then you just show up? Well, better late than never, right? You gotta be freaking kidding me. Better never than ever, loser. You left mom and me. 
You hurt us. Because of you, I grew up thinking that I wasn't worth sticking around for or fighting for. Just some mistake that inconvenienced your life. No. It's not... Look, I'm sorry I left. Yeah, me too. I was a coward. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to be a father. I never had one myself. You have to believe. You were the only good thing that I've ever done. And I sabotaged it. I didn't deserve you or, or your mother. When I left, I, I thought I was doing you a favor. I didn't want to hurt you anymore. I thought my daddy ran off to make his fortune and find a better family. One that didn't pester him with two million questions all the time. I could have really used a father, you know. I was so alone. Is it okay to say that I'm here now? You're here now? On my deathbed? Nice. You're a little late, Dad. I grew up feeling like a reject. You deserve so much better. I deserved you to be better. You're right. It took me hitting rock bottom to wake up and see all that I threw away. And God found me in that place. And he offered me mercy and forgiveness. He saved my life. So your big stack of novels and Jack Daniels didn't do it for you, huh? I don't really care, so... In a rehab? <laughs> yes. I can't make up for the time I lost and the hurt I caused, but I am sorry, and I pray one day that you'll be able to forgive me. I'm here now, and, and I'm not going anywhere. Just leave. Get out. This is too much for me right now. I'm sorry. I'll be outside waiting. I'm praying for you, Jules. You used to call me Jules when we played catch. Good catch, Jules. Maybe if I was a boy, you would have stuck around. Jules? What the flip is he doing here? Who does he think he is? Talk about crummy timing, Batman. On the brink of losing your womb, risking dying, feeling deserted by every man in your life. And he wants my forgiveness? Well, it's too late. He has some nerve marching in here after almost 20 years? Yeah. But you have missed your dad. I have missed my dad. All of those years, all of my tears, I wasn't worth the fight. I was never enough to stay for to love Now I feel lost in the night I'm falling deeper I'll never be free of these chains Can you hear me? Gently I'm calling your name
forget it. I can't. Julia, if you don't let go of this hurt and bitterness, it will kill you. It is killing you. But I can't just let him back in to have him abandon me again. I know that's what's going to happen. Julia, your hope is in me, not in others. I will never leave you or forsake you. People will always let you down, but only you have the power to forgive. I am not forgiving him. You were cheated out of a father figure in your life. You've always looked to me as your friend and your king, but I want to be that perfect father figure you've always dreamed of. Great, then I don't need my dad. But forgiving your father will take the expectation of failure off of him. Please, let me love you so that you can love him. He's still learning his place in your life. Julia, your heart has been hardened towards father figures. My heart is not the problem. Father figures are. Julia, I want to heal you, but don't you see? I can't. What do you mean, you can't? You have been fractured and made sick with your unwillingness to forgive. Please, let me take care of it. He's here. He wants to reconcile. Please, forgive him. What if I die of cancer? What if I never get out of here? What difference will it make? He needs to pay for what he's done. No, Julia, I paid for what he did. I paid that debt. I was beaten and betrayed, so I know what it means to forgive. Why does it matter? Why do you care? Love. I have always loved both of you. If you loved me so much, why did you let me suffer? Suffering is inevitable in this broken world, but forgiveness is the only way to find healing. I can't. It hurts too much. Julia, please, trust me. Let it go. Okay. I'll trust you, but I don't like it. Dad, I forgive you for leaving me. He was broken too. I let go of the hurt and rejection. Finally, now I can heal you. I really do want my dad. I want him to love me.
Thank you for being here. I know Julia appreciates it. I don't think so. She tossed me out. <laughs> well, it's shocking for her to see you after so long. Just give her time. Yeah, you're probably right. You're different. <laughs> you know, I, I need you to forgive me. I left you when you needed me the most. Is this part of your 12 steps? <laughs> yes, but I'm a new man. I've been saved. Me too. You're leaving Drew us right into the arms of God. He saved our lives. Will you forgive me? They talked and they talked and they <laughs> prayed for their daughter. When suddenly, sooner than expected, the surgeon arrived. Strange. What could be wrong? Hello, you two. Is she all right? Uh, I have some news. It's pretty unexpected, actually. Um, when I went to remove the cancer, it was gone. Ah, oh, that's a miracle. <laughs> There is no trace of endometriosis, tumors, uterine, ovarian cancer of any kind. Medically, it doesn't make any sense, but there is no need for the hysterectomy, so we closed her up. We still have to run a few more tests sure. at this point, but I don't see a need for the chemo or radiation we had planned. It's a miracle. That's all when I can, can say, it is a miracle. Sorry. When can we see her? Uh, she's in recovery, so it'll be about an hour. Okay. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Talk about some twists and turns. Now, have you ever noticed how distinctive in personality Julia's friends are? How Cardi is so emotional, and how Thea is so strong-willed, and Maya, the thinker, the logical one, is always trying to make sense of things. Interesting combination. Now, what's going to happen next? Will Daryl come back into the picture? Will Julia pick up her life where she left off? We'll just have to wait and see. But first, a brief intermission. Hey, hey, you found him. Oh my gosh. Know, he's been going to our church, so it wasn't that hard. Do you think he'll be okay meeting Cecil in a public place like this? I really hope so, otherwise he's never going to talk to me again. Hey, Ben! How's it going? I want to meet you, my, Julia, my fiancé. <laughs> Did you hear that, folks? Fiancé! My, my! So much has changed. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Can I get you guys started with something to drink? I'll just have some coffee. Then, uh, just water for me. All right, you got it. So. How are you liking it over at CC? CC, that's short for City Church. I like it. I wanted to find a church my kids would want to attend, and they love it. Oh, yeah, we like it there, too. So how many kids do you have? Two, a seven-year-old girl and a five-year-old boy. See, I grew up going to church, but when my mom died and my dad took off, I sort of quit, but now I want my kids to have that community. Um, what about your wife? Uh, she's coming around. She didn't grow up in church, so it's not as urgent in her mind. Right. But now that the kids are starting school, we wanted to have that balanced input. All right, here you guys go. Thank you. And what can I get you started for food? I'll have the soup du jour. Wait, what is it today? Uh, bean with bacon. Ooh, that sounds good. I'll have that. And I will have the patty milk. Comes with fries or potato salad. Oh, you've got to try the potato salad. Hey, trust me, Max's potato salad is the best. Okay, I'll try that. All right, I'll go get that for you guys. This meeting between Cecil and his son Ben was a long time in the planning. Cecil, now sober, got a job at the diner as a dishwasher. He and Rocky, his furball roommate, got a place of their own. And he's going to AA and turning his life around. And now, the day is the day. Okay, this is it. How do I look? You look perfectly respectable. Okay. <laughs> oh, my king, we need your help. Ben, I want you to meet my friend Cecil. Uh, we've met. What are you doing here? Cecil and I have been friends for a while now. 
Well, I, I thought it was about time, you know, to re reach out and, and mend some fences. <laughs> yeah, Julian, yeah, that Blake agreed to help me out. Yeah. Well, come on, man, say something. It's your dad. Well, well, you look sober. About a year now, thanks to these guys. You mean thanks to the king? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Cecil is nervous, and Ben is taken by surprise. But... Blake and Julia, now engaged and partners in crime, are confident that it's time to reunite this father and son. And truth be told, it is a very welcome reunion. Hey, oh, you won't believe what's happening. Cecil is reuniting with his son right now. Oh, honey, that's so exciting. What a big day. Wonders never cease around you. <laughs> I have the perfect table right over here. Oh, so many things all in one day. She'll be here soon. <sighs> Does she know where her grandparents? Oh, that little chickadee is smart as a whip. You'll have a hard time keeping up with her. Besides, her parents have explained everything, and they are just as excited as we are. A granddaughter? <laughs> I'm not old enough for this. She better not call me Grandpa. <laughs> Why don't you just wait and see what she has to say? I'm sure she'll have the perfect name for you. I'd be fine with Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are her grandparents. But she already has grandparents. Just quit stressing. <sighs> kind of an impossible request at a time like this. All right, so can I get you guys something to eat? You know what? I'm starved. How about a, um, a cheeseburger and Max's potato salad? Maybe an iced tea, too? Sure. Mmm, that sounds good. All right, Eva, I'll have that too. Uh, Max, two cheeseburgers, potato salad on the side. <laughs> two patty whackers with the good stuff on the side. Some days are just different than other days. Things come suddenly and without explanation. A lifetime of hope and preparation, and then everything happens. Today is one of those days. Nice to finally meet you. Joy, this is Ari and Daryl, your biological grandparents. I will call you my grand panda because you look like a professional cuddler. And grand shark for you because you look a little dangerous, but in a protective kind of way. Now, <laughs> I already have lots of grandma and grandpas, so let's just keep this simple. Grand panda and grand shark works for me. Julia was right. You are precocious. Grand panda, huh? I'm not sure how I feel about that. Bacon Jordan, it's a GP for Grand Panda. Let me test the panda part first. <laughs> yep, I was right. Professional cuddler. <laughs> I'm not sure about mine either. Grand Shark? <laughs> Just to guess, you look like a shark. <laughs> okay, that'll work. <laughs> nice to meet you, Diaz. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> hey, Joy, come meet your bio dad. Oh my goodness, so much new family. Dad, they're all here. Sayla Joy was a glue stick, as you can tell. She was just like her name, Peace and Joy. You see, folks, all good things come to those who put their trust in God. What in the world's going on in my diner? 
Cecil, those dishes are not going to wash themselves. And Julia, there's a line at the door waiting to be seated. And Max, get back to work. Girl, I never expected this. Not with all the chaos and the mess of the past. Well, so much for trying to control everything. I couldn't have planned this better. It's perfect. I can finally, truly say, I'm so happy I could burst. I'm just happy to be at peace with myself, at last. You see, folks, Maya was Julia's fractured mind, striving for understanding when everything was crazy. And Thea was her fleshly will, fighting for control of an uncontrollable world. And Thea, Cardia, she was her fractured emotions, shut down and damaged until Julia was finally able to confront the brokenness, to offer forgiveness, and to mend the fences. They were the invisible parts at war inside of Julia. Now 